Welcome to Good Libations. I'm Ethel Andrews, the resident mixologist, and we're exploring different trends today as we always do. And we've been talking about the resurgence of using brandy or cognac in drinks, and also the relatively new trend of using banana in cocktails, and I mean fresh banana, not banana liqueur. And the cocktail that I'm going to make next is a rum-based drink, but it incorporates fresh banana. And again, banana and rum is a natural, an absolute natural, so this makes a lovely cocktail. Now, you can use light rum if you like. I prefer to use golden or dark rum in my cocktails, so I'm going to use a golden rum in this particular drink. But we're going to do what we did before. We're going to actually chop up the banana and we're going to muddle it or pulverize it a bit in the rum, in the base liquor. And I'm going to measure and be nice to my audience here. And it's going to be about a shot and a half, just like with the other drinks. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to the shaker. And then I'm going to cut up the fresh banana and we're going to kind of work it into the rum. And this is the best way to do it rather than just doing it by itself. Because if you do it this way, the, it's going to incorporate within the actual alcohol and it's going to taste a lot better than if you just muddled it or, or pulverized it by itself. It's the same thing that I do when I make, uh, as an example, mojitos, is I muddle the mint within the rum rather than by itself with the sugar. And again, this particular drink, you can add simple syrup to it if you wish, but it's better, in my opinion, if you don't because it's going to make it too sweet with the other ingredients. So we're going to go about trying to kind of pulverize this banana here so it incorporates into the rum. And you can use a muddler if you like. I use a metal spoon because it tends to do a better job with getting that banana chopped up and infused in the alcohol and having it break down in pieces so that you can actually detect the flavor. And this is a trend again that started in the East Coast in New York and Miami first of all and has made it its way cross country to the West Coast now. So a lot of establishments are making drinks with fresh banana and they're using all sorts of liquor, even bourbon, which seems a bit odd. But anyway, now we're going to add one of the other important ingredients to this drink and that's the coconut rum. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in about um, a third of what I used of the regular rum in this particular drink. Yeah, we don't want it to have an overwhelming note of coconut. We want it to be subtle with the rum. And this drink also incorporates the trend of using brandy again in drinks beyond the Alexander and the coffee drinks. And we use just a hint of it. It's kind of like the principle if we make uh, a Singapore sling. It's mainly based on gin and cherry hearing, but adding a bit of brandy to it kicks it up a bit and makes it better. So we're adding just a bit of brandy to it. And that way we're not neglecting a good spirit that has been neglected for a long time, unfortunately. So we're gonna go ahead and add some fruit to this drink as well. And this particular drink is called the Cubano because it originated in Havana. And of course now people are allowed to travel to, to Cuba when they hadn't been so really for many decades. So the innovative creative bartenders and mixologists there are coming up with some lovely drinks and introducing them to the United States. So we're going to go ahead and put lime in this particular drink because that is what it requires and lime is a natural with rum and usually it's a natural with tequila too but in the other banana based drink that I made I used lemon and a bit of orange. So we're going to go ahead and squeeze a good amount of lime in this rum based drink. 
And at this particular point, being that the alcohol has been able to sit with the banana for a while, I'm going to go ahead and add the ice. Yeah, with this particular drink, it was kind of important to really let it sit in the alcohol, the different types of alcohol. So we're going to add the ice. And this particular drink, again, is a shaker method. And it is a drink that we divest into this style of a glass or a martini glass. It is not a drink that we pour over ice, but rather we shake it with the ice. And I'm going to add a bit more of the lime, squeezing it by hand to make sure that that nice oil from the peel gets in there and infuses it well. And now I'm going to go ahead and shake it up. And I better wipe off my hands. And that's another issue I wanted to bring up too. If we're doing bartending or mixology, make sure that we have a bowl of warm sudsy water and paper towels handy because your hands are going to get grungy. People are probably going to bring you food and frankly your nose might run. <laughs> so you want to keep your hands clean because that is most unappetizing and unsanitary to have dirty hands when you're making cocktails for people. I would not appreciate it if a cocktail was served to me by someone whose hygiene was poor. Not necessary. And even if you don't have a bar sink, you can use, like I mentioned, the warm water with soap in it. So we're going to go ahead and shake this. And I'm going to go ahead and divest it in the glass. We're going to work that last drop out of here. And we do get some banana residue and pulp in the drink like we did with the other drink, but that's good. Actually, that's quite nice. It adds that nice extra dimension to the drink. And for a garnish, we're going to put a bit of lime that we're going to squeeze and leave in the drink. And because I didn't have the forethought this time to reserve a bit of the banana, I'm going to rescue some out of the bottom here and put it in also as a garnish. Just letting people know what's in here. And it looks like we could actually pour a little bit more into this drink. Yeah, this drink, the Cubano, people were introduced to who've made the, the trip traveling to Cuba. And nowadays, too, you can use American-based airlines to get to Cuba, because before you would have to use Cubana only. But now you can use American-based airlines so I'm going to go ahead and try this drink and see if the ingredients are properly blended and in the proper proportion. So let me give it a try because sometimes you have to redo things a bit. Oh, that is quite lovely. Really, really nice. Again, you get a hint of coconut liqueur and you get a nice note of the banana. And it's not necessary to put the banana liqueur in there unless you want to, unless you want it sweeter. Or certainly not simple syrup because that would make it way too sweet and, and cloying. And then it might be okay for dessert, but not to have before dinner as a cocktail. And the proportions are about right of the rum, the coconut rum, and the banana. So again, a very worthy, very unique cocktail that incorporates an ingredient that hasn't been used before much in cocktails, and that's fresh banana. So this is the resurgence of a trend, or actually the beginning of a trend, that I hope catches on in this country. Very nice. And again, I'm Ethel Andrews. I'm a mixologist. And as I always say in my show, let's drink responsibly and carefully and keep our community well spoken of when we imbibe. And if you're the host, remember that there's a certain amount of accountability when you serve your drinks alcohol, your guests alcohol. So be careful. Thank you again for tuning in to Good Libations. I'm Ethel Andrews, and we'll look forward to future episodes. Thank you. Goodbye.